Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions and welcome to July's installment of our Year of the Bride series. This month we are going to take you through how to make this very pretty and really easy boho bridal crown. So it is very delicate, so we used an extremely fine weight yarn, and it's a very simple design. A lot of times with the boho theme, you want to keep things nice and simple. It's just a very simple little band. You could make it thicker if you wish. And you'll notice that we adorned it with some really dainty little ribbons, and I've done it in pink as well as white. And the tutorial we're going to be working on today will be done in the pink just because it'll make it a little easier to show up on screen. Now, sadly, we are still in the midst of um, basically a global quarantine at the time of this filming. Things are starting to open up again, but of course, uh, there are many brides with their weddings on hold at the moment. So I haven't been able to um, get in contact with the bride in order to model this really pretty um head accessory so I've done it myself and of course it's not going to do it justice but hopefully a few of these uh, close-ups of the detail on this crown will give you an idea of how it would look. You can actually uh, insert other things into these little openings. I was thinking of even doing something like baby's breath or even some small dainty flowers. So you can really customize this piece and make it adjustable to um, whatever theme that you're thinking of for your wedding or somebody you may know. So um, I really look forward to having you uh, try this project out. So without further ado, let's grab all of our materials and let's get stitching up our boho crown. Okay everyone, here are the materials you're gonna need to make your pretty boho crown. Now I've made it in the white but for the tutorial, I am going to use some of this pink. It is the same yarn, and I used the Peyton's Grace 100% mercerized cotton. And I just have an affinity for this yarn. I think it feels really nice. It is light with a bit of, um, I don't know how else to call it. I call it girth, but it is very fine. But I just feel it's it's got this pretty silky feel, but it's quite strong also. They come in 50 gram balls. You will not, as you can see, need to use hardly any of it, a very, very small amount. So the pink that I have is also the same um, brand by Our Inspirations in the pink. And uh, this is just some leftover from a previous project. So it's fairly simple to make, as you can see. And then of course you can adorn it in any which way you like, like I did here. But, um, so the other things you're going to need are a four millimeter hook, also known as a G or a size six. Um, this yarn actually calls for a 3.75 millimeter hook. I just always tend to go up slightly the hook size from what they recommend just because um, I like my stitches to sit just a smidge more relaxed, okay? So that's the yarn, that's the hook, and of course, as always, you know what I say, always make sure you have a handy pair of scissors and your trusty darning needle for sewing in any ends. So let's get started on our boho crown. Okay, so to begin, we are going to place a slip knot on our hook. Just like that okay then we will begin by chaining three one two and three okay once you've chained three you want to find the very first chain you did so it's the one right after the knot and you are going to place a single crochet into that first chain. So you'll insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops. So you're gonna have something alien that looks like that. It might look like a little tiny V. What we are actually creating are loops. Okay, so if I pull it apart a little bit, you can see it's a very small circular loop there, okay? Now, this is what we're gonna do for the rest of the project, and I'm gonna show you. You're gonna chain two, 
Then you're going to turn your work over and right back into that loop or into that space, you're going to single crochet again. Just like that. So now you can see that you've created two little circular spaces. And we continue on. You chain two. You turn your work again. Now we want to make sure we work into the previous space right there. There we go. So we want to make sure that we don't work into the single crochet, but into the space we've created. So you just insert your hook, pull up a loop, and single crochet. And this is the repeat. See how, see how these chain loops are forming? That's what I call them, chain loops. Because you're going to chain two, you'll turn your work, and into the space of the previous one, you just single crochet, and that creates a loop. So we're basically creating loops on top of loops on top of loops. There you go, so you can start seeing it take shape. I'm gonna do it one more time. We're gonna chain two. You will turn your work over, and then into the space that you just created previously, you insert your hook, and single crochet. Okay, so you're going to keep doing this until you get the desired length that you want and it just creates like basically a chain, okay, a chain of chain loops. And so that was the basis for which we created our uh, wreath right here. So if I turn over the back, hopefully you can see, I know it's tough with the white, but you can see that it's based on loops and that's what we did the second round into. So. The first row or round of our work, I'm gonna call it rounds, is creating these chain loops. And that's what you wanna do for now. You will create the length that works for you. You generally want it to measure right around the head of the person you're making it for. You can actually, it doesn't actually have to meet perfectly the two ends because with the ribbons, and, and a lot of people do do this. They make it slightly shorter so that with the ribbon, we'll create the tie there and create the um, the union. Some people make it a little longer and they'll cross it and then maybe add some baby's breath or, or things like that at the end. So it's totally up to you, but you definitely want a length that you'll be able to fasten around. Now, this one that I did in the white, I created 56 loops, okay? so. It will depend on how tightly or loosely you crochet, okay? So I'm gonna leave you to create your loops. I'm gonna go ahead and create my 56 because I know that's what works for me. And then I will meet back up with you when we are gonna do the second round. Okay, so I have done my 56 loops. And so my work looks something like this. So it just looks like a bunch of bumpy um, chain loops is basically it. So at the end of the very last one, which I've got right here, we're now gonna create the really, really tiny little bud-like effects around these loops here. So. Once you've reached your desired length, what we're gonna do now is chain one. And now we're gonna be working into our loops here. Okay. Then we're gonna place our hook inside the loop and place a single crochet inside that loop. Okay, just like that. Then we're gonna place our hook back in again and do another single crochet. So now we've got two single crochets and then we're going to insert one more time but we're going to slip stitch. So that means when you pull up that loop, you're gonna to continue to pull it through the loop that's on your hook. So we've got a little something that looks like that, nothing too crazy, but we're just starting to create the shape of our little buds there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the very next loop and you're gonna insert your hook 
And again, you're going to place one single crochet back in, two single crochets, and then a slip stitch. And this is going to be what you're going to repeat into all of your loops. So now you can see it's just creating a little bit more kind of a thicker edge there. So into every single loop, we're now going to place two single crochets and a slip stitch. So I'm going to do that one more time into this loop here. One single crochet. Back in there for the second single crochet and slip stitch. So the slip stitch is what creates that cute little kind of ridged effect. So that's it, that's all. Pretty sweet and simple. So you probably want to pause the video here and just go through all of your loops and proceed to follow this pattern. Two single crochets and one slip stitch. And once you get to the end, I'll meet you back up there. And I'm in my very last loop here. And I'm just going to place a slip stitch. And that finishes all the loops on this side. So your work is looking something like that. Super pretty. Okay, so at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little loop so that if you would like to attach a ribbon, you can. Now, I actually also left the little tail loose on my white one because if you need to have an extra tie or you want something extra to be able to tuck into the hair, this little tail will come in handy. So I am not going to worry about trying to... Um, to crochet over it. Okay, so, but we are gonna create a little loop here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain three, just like that. And then we're gonna go back into that same loop and we're just going to slip stitch. Okay, so we don't need anything too big. And so you've got this tiny little loop there that you can insert a ribbon later on. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. Now it also has brought me around to the bottom of all of my loops. So I'm just going to continue on now. I'm going to chain one actually because I've slip stitched and now I'm going to just go right back into that same loop and I'm going to do my typical two single crochets and one slip stitch. Okay, so that's allowed me to come all the way, whoops, around to the other side. So again, I'm going to go into the next loop and do the same thing. Two single crochets and then a slip stitch. Just like that. So now you can see that it's starting to form a little bud-like kind of uh, look. And that's what you're going to do all the way back until you get back to the beginning. So actually this looks really pretty in pink as well. Um, just, um, just really pretty and dainty. Okay, so just go all the way until you come back to your very first loop and I'll meet you here. We do have to do one other little loop there for a ribbon and we're pretty much all set. Okay, this is my last loop here. So the two double crochets. I'm gonna slip stitch. So you can see I've met back up with the very first one I did. And so they just butt up against each other very nicely. And now I'm gonna do my little loop. So I'm gonna chain three. One, two, three. And I'm just gonna find a spot back in that loop and I'm gonna slip stitch to join. So nothing too fancy, but at least you'll be able to find it sticking out like that. And then we're done. I'm just going to snip my yarn, leave a little bit of the tail just to match the other one. And, and that's it. And then just tighten it. 
and you are good to go. And I might even just pull that through the actual loop so that it'll sit nicely and it'll create a marker there. Whoops. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that loop spacing, just like that. And I'm going to pull that tail through so that at least it's actually coming through the loop and it's marking the spot. And that, guys, believe it or not, is it. So it creates this really super cute little kind of uh, flower bud type of look. And I just love it. So what you can do, like I did in the white one, and as I um, did in the photographs there, you can adorn this in any which way you want. Now, actually, I was hoping that I'd have some uh, baby's breath because I think adding some baby's breath would just be absolutely divine. So in this case, I had a lot of these white ribbons left. And just to kind of add to that beautiful kind of boho vibe, I just basically um, laced them in between the loop. So I went in one and out the other. Um, in no particular fashion, like in this case, I left a few from the bottom and then I left about three spaces here and then did bows. I originally had them just drooping down straight, but I just felt it looked a bit lackluster. So that's why I actually added bows, but you can do anything. In fact, if you've got some really pretty beading that you want to lace in and out of here, I think that would look absolutely gorgeous. Um, like if you go to a place like Michael's where they sell the beads in the strands even, you could maybe try and lace them in through here and that would look divine. So I'll show you, actually I've got a few other ribbons here just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do. I actually really love, I love that in pink too. So pretty, so dainty. And you know what's really wonderful about this particular project is it doesn't have to be for the bride. You can make this for um, the bridesmaids if you have a certain uh, boho theme, maybe the flower girl, or for any occasion. Like just take the bows out and this makes a really pretty headband and you can tie it on the bottom. But I've got um, a ribbon here just to show you kind of how you can adorn it. Now I can also use my hook and just kind of grab the ribbon just to kind of help me a little bit make it easier and pull it through and then I'll go in the loop the next loop beside it and again you don't need the hook for this but for me I just find it made life a lot easier so you just have it like that and you can make the length as, as long as you like these are just ribbons that I happen to have lying around so I just tied a very relaxed knot and then I just made a bow. So I just tied it like that. Now initially when you do it, it's gonna look something like this, which I felt was a little bit kind of juvenile. So that's why once you make your bow, what I do is I hold the center and I just kind of gently pull one end and then I hold the center again and I gently pull the other end. And the reason why I hold the center is so you don't wanna actually loosen the hold. And then I just really kind of press that down. And so that looks a bit um, nicer for kind of a bridal boho um, thing. Now this particular ribbon I think is actually too thick. The ones I used here were really thin and dainty and I think really lend themselves to that beautiful boho look. So there we have it. And this will look divine on any summer bride. And unfortunately, I didn't have a bride I could model this on. Therefore, uh, that's why you saw the photos of me at the beginning um, wearing the headband uh, because we are all still social distancing and quarantining. I mean, we're, we're getting close to the tail end here, but it's still going on, guys. It's a thing at the time of this filming. So... Here we have it. Isn't that just so pretty? Divine. Super quick and easy. And you can make several of these guys. So I hope that you have enjoyed working on this cute little project. 
And uh, if you know of a bride in your life coming up that may appreciate it, I hope that this project will come in handy for you. So I've enjoyed having you guys come along. And as always, please do feel free to get in touch with me. I'm on Instagram at The Stitch Sessions, Facebook. We have a website. You can reach me at crochetcrafty.com. And we also have live interactive online classes. So we, of course, are still doing all the tutorials on YouTube for absolutely free. And for a small fee, you can enroll in one of our online classes. And what's really great about the interactive classes is you can actually ask me questions live. You can show me your work and we can compare notes. So it's super fun. We've had a few really cozy, wonderful classes going on throughout the quarantine. So it would be wonderful to have you guys come along. In the meantime, if you have not pressed that subscribe button, please do so. We love having you a part of our crochet family. And it's also a great way to um, stay in the know on a regular basis every time we upload a new tutorial, which I upload every Wednesday. And sometimes I throw up some bonuses like some crochet quick chats or some of the crochet conversations, which I hope to be doing again soon once quarantine is over. And uh, of course, make sure you press that little notification bell and you'll get notified every time that happens. All right, my friends. So in the meantime, take good care of yourselves. Happy crocheting. Have a wonderful day. Be kind, be loving to each other. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial. Take care. Thank you.